Hello grade 10s, welcome to this lesson on electrostatic forces. Let's join Keke right away. Let's start by finding out how the Van der Graaff generator works. A broad belt in the middle of the machine rotates around a wheel. As the belt moves past a metallic brush at the bottom of the column, it becomes positively charged because it loses electrons to the brush. The positively charged belt now moves upwards as it passes the upper brush. Negative charges move from the dome and brush onto the belt to neutralize the positive charges. This means that there are more positive charges left behind on the brush and metal dome than negative charges. So the metal dome is now positively charged. The longer the machine is left to run, the more positive charges there will be on the metal dome. Now, we were lucky enough to get permission to film this machine's big brother at the Witts University Physics Department. Have a look at this demonstration. Letitia is standing on a plastic insulator. This will prevent any charges from the generator passing to Earth. This means that the charges accumulating on the metal dome will also accumulate on Letitia. Letitia is standing with both her hands on the metal dome. Do you see how her hair is standing on end? As she becomes charged, her hair rises slowly up into the air until it is sticking out in all directions. Can you explain why this happens? Because Letitia is touching the metal dome, negative charges move from her body onto the metal dome to neutralize the positive charges. Positive charges are therefore left behind on her body. This also includes the hairs on her head. All the hairs will have the same charge and they will repel one another and move apart. The scalp also has the same charge, and so the hairs move away from it up into the air. So, what have we learned from this demonstration? Each strand of Letitia's hair carried the same charge, and there was a force of repulsion between the strands. So it seems that objects with the same charges repel each other. That's quite similar to what we learned about magnets. In our lessons on magnetism, we showed that like poles of magnets repelled each other and opposite poles attracted each other. Let's see if we can establish a similar rule for static electricity. First, let's test if like charges repel. We need two objects which we know have the same type of charge and which are free to move. KK and Aaron rub two balloons on the same cloth to give the balloons the same type of charge as one another. We know these balloons must have the same type of charge as one another because they're both made of the same material and they're both rubbed against the same material. We don't know whether they are both positively charged or both negatively charged, but that doesn't matter. We only need to know that they have the same type of charge as one another. They therefore have like charges. This allows us to test our hypothesis that like charges repel. Over to you, Keke and Aaron. Let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> it seems to be quite attracted to you. Well, they're running away from each other. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Like they're pushing, <laughs> like repelling against each other. That's great. Okay, hello. <laughs> That's what you're hoping to see here. Yeah. Ah, this is... F mm, our investigation is going very well. Wow. Now we need two balloons with opposite charge. So we must rub the two balloons with different materials. Maybe we could use wool and plastic. One balloon needs to be charged positively and the other negatively. However, rubbing the balloons on different cloths doesn't necessarily charge them differently. It might or it might not. So how will we know? We've already seen that like charges repel. So if the balloons repel again, we know they are like charged and we need to try again. Another way to check if the two balloons are like or opposite charged is to use an electroscope. An electroscope measures types of charge. This electroscope consists of a glass bottle, a metal cap, a metal shaft and two gold leaves. We can charge an electroscope negatively by rubbing a negatively charged object against the metal cap. 
This transfers negative charges to the electroscope, making the gold leaves repel one another and so move apart. Now if we bring a negative object towards the negative electroscope, the gold leaves move even further apart. And if we bring a positive object towards the negative electroscope, the gold leaves move together. So let's join Aaron and Keke again as they test the hypothesis that opposite charges attract. If you can wrap that red balloon on the jersey, then check its charge there on the electroscope. Of course. Let me rub it onto the air. Okay. Now check this out. Now see that the leaves of the electroscope are moving further apart from each other. Now this means that the balloon becomes negatively charged. Now you see in the meantime, I rub this blue balloon with cling wrap. Let's test its charge. This blue balloon is positively charged. I know this because the leaves of the charged electroscope are moving closer to each other. Okay, Aaron, hold your balloon still while I bring it closer to mine. <laughs> Look, they're shocked. <laughs> That's right. This is what we were hoping to see. The charges are attracting each other. Thanks, KK and Aaron. What a fun and easy demonstration to do. Let's summarize electrostatic forces. Like charges repel. Opposite charges attract. Of course, both positive and negative objects contain both positive and negative charges. So pairs of charged objects attract and repel one another. However, the balance of positive and negative charge in each determines the overall or net force they exert on one another. And this is attraction for oppositely charged objects and repulsion for like charged objects. And that's it for today. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.